class, this is Professor Smith. I will be doing a movie on the Central Limit Theorem Sample Proportion. The credit risk department of a major bank estimates the default rain, rate on loans. You can't really see it, so let me move this over so you can see. On loans under 10000 to be 2%. The bank will make 1,600 loans under $10,000 next month. So they ask us, find the mean of P hat, where P hat is the proportion of defaults on the 1,600 loans under 10000 to be made next month. So let me slide this over so you can see that again. So they want us to find the mean of P hat, where that's the proportion of defaults on the 1,600 loans under 10000 to be made next month. So let's um, go out to Word to uh, be able to capture what I'll be saying uh, so that you can have a visual as well as a audio of what I'm talking about. So what I have here is um, 1,600 loans uh, that are under 10000 And let's say 30 of them default on this one sample of 1,600 loans. Then it turns out when you have 30 default out of 1,600, let me blow this up a little bit bigger so you can see. So then you'll see that you'll have 30 out of 1600, 0.01875, or approximately 1.9% default rate. Let's say, though, that they had another group of 1600 loans from all the loans that they do at the bank. Um, and of course, these fit the criteria that they're under 10 grand. Let's say this time, though, from this batch of 1600, 40 default, and that'll give us a 2.5% default rate. Well, it turns out these two examples represent p hat. That's the proportion from the sample that default. So let me go ahead and open up math type so you can see the symbol that I'm using for p hat. So it's p with a little hat above it. And I believe you have one such creature, so let me find it real quick. So yes, I found it. I selected the little p and then uh, once you do that, if you click this little guy here, there's one with a little hat. So anyway, so that's P hat. That just stands for the proportion from this particular sample that defaulted, because we're looking at the default rate. Then it turns out, let's say, like we said, we had another sample where we had 40 default. So if we had 40 default, then P hat would be 2.5%. And so I'll go ahead and plug that in as well. So uh, P, and then I'll just highlight the little P and give it a hat. And then let's say that you had another uh, loan. and un 10 defaulted, then that would be 10 out of 1,600, one-fourth of that 40 that we had above. And so you get a small 0 0.00625 or 0.6%. So this would be another P hat. And so we find that each time we're taking a look at a sample, you're going to get a proportion that's going to default, and we're calling that P hat. Well, what we're asking to find is to take an example of all possible, not just these three that I've shown, but all possible samplings of 1,600 loans under 10,000. What would the P hats be? And then take the average of those P hats. Well, it turns out, just like we found with the sampling distribution of means, where we took the average of all the X bars, it turns out that was equal to the population mean. Well, it turns out the average of all the p hats 
is equal to the population proportion. So let me write that down for you so you can see what I'm saying. So I'm taking a look at the average of all the p-hats. So I'm going to go out to math type, give myself an equation, and I'm going to use the symbol mu, which is a Greek letter, and I'm going to take the average of all the p-hats. So that's a subscript, so I'm going to give a little subscript there, and I'm going to put a p in there, but I don't want the average of p's, but of the sample proportions. So I'll go ahead and give that one a hat. And it turns like the average of those sample proportions, the average of those sample proportions is just equal to the population proportion P. So let's go out and answer the first question in Alex. So it says find the mean of the P hats. That's just going to be P. And they tell us that the proportion in the default rate here is given by 2%. So then I'm going to go ahead and put in 2% here, 0 0.02. Then it says find the standard deviation of the p hat. And so it turns out that the standard deviation of the p hat is given by the following. So I'll write that down as well. So what I've done is I've copied uh, down the mu or the average of the p hats, and I'm going to change that symbol to the sigma. So now we're finding the standard deviation of those sample proportions. So it turns out it's given by the square root of p. times 1 minus p. This whole expression divided by n. So that's the formula for finding the standard deviation of all the sample proportions. And so let's go ahead and um, write that answer down in Alex. Oh, you know what? I didn't save that. Let's save that. All right, so I'm going to uh, use the Alex calculator so that I can um, compute that guy. So it's going to be the square root of p, which is 0 0.02, times 1 minus 0 0.02, or you could put in 0.98, divided by To make sure that the division bar doesn't include the square root symbol, divided by the 1600, or you could just put over 400. And so when you do that computation, you get 0 0.0035. So I'll copy that and paste that into the answer box. And then let's see if they ask us if there's restriction on how they want to surround it. Okay, so I'll just put in all the creatures there. Then they ask us the last question, so let's move the calculator out of the way. It says compute an approximation for the probability that p hat is less than or equal to 0 0.015. Well, it turns out we don't have a probability of p hat key on the calculator, so we can see the probability of z, probability that you're going to learn how to say this later, chi square, probability that t, probability of f, but no p hats. Well, it turns out once you know the mean and the standard deviation, we can um, use a similar formula that we used before. Since this is on the normal distribution, it turns out we can use the normal uh, distribution. And I'll be honest with you, there are some criteria under which you want to use the uh, normal distribution uh, for the sample proportions. Uh, um, there's restrictions, and we'll talk about that later, but for now we'll just go ahead and uh, substitute in the formula for finding z once you know the mean and the standard deviation.
So I'll go back out to Word. I'm trying to find the pause button, but I've got so many things open I can't find the thing to put it in. Oh well. Alright, so this is how we find Z. So I'll go ahead and copy this equation. I guess I could have just started from scratch. So we're going to go ahead and find a formula for Z. And so Z is equal to got to find that pause button. I think I have so many things open. My little computer is going cuckoo. So it's equal to p hat Actually, let's review what it is for the other one. But we just The first one we, time we introduced the formula, we said it was x minus mu all over sigma. Do you remember that? Okay, so x minus mu over sigma. That was when we were taking a look, taking a normal distribution and standardizing it, finding the z-score that corresponds to it. Well now, when we looked at sampling distributions, this changed a little bit. This was x bar minus the mean for the x bars all over the standard deviation for the x bars. I'll just copy this little guy so I don't have to do it again. Control C. Alright, and it turns out we discovered um, when we found out looking at that example in class that it turns out mu sub x bar is just the same as mu. So we'll, we wrote it this way. So z was equal to mu, because the average of the sample means was mu. And then it turns out the standard deviation of the sample mean, of the sampling distribution, was given by sigma over the square root of n. Now we're going to do a similar formula, not for the sample distribution of means, like in this particular case, so this one here was for sample means, um, or sampling distribution of means. Now we're going to take a look at a similar formula for the distribution of sample proportions. So I'm going to copy this again. Actually, I'm going to copy the whole thing. I'm really trying to find the pause button so the movie won't be so long. It's hidden somewhere underneath all these goodies. All right, so this will be p hat instead of mu of p hat, it's going to be p, and the standard deviation was given by the square root. There it is, given by this guy here, so I'm going to copy that one. And then we'll have this guy here. Now normally I would have paused all this and you would have just seen it appear, but it's all good. 
And so that's the formula that we're going to use. p hat minus p all over the square root of p1 minus p. And that's the formula that we would use for a sample, not means, but proportion. So that's the formula that we will use for sample proportions. Okay, cool. Let's go back out to Alex. All right. So we want to find the probability that p hat is less than 0 0.015. And so that's equal to the probability that z will be less than whatever the z value, z score would be for 0.015. So let's go out to Word and compute the z value that corresponds to a sample proportion of 0.015. So let's go ahead and compute that. So I only need the last equation at the bottom there. So I'll copy that one, control C. And then we'll substitute in. So p hat is 0.015. p is the answer that we put in part a, which is 0.02. And the standard deviation is the answer we put in point part, part b. Which is 0 0.0035. Let me go double check that value. Yeah, two zeros. <laughs> the inverse nickety. All right, so that's how we would compute the z score. So the answer in part A, which is p, I mean the answer in the problem, which is p hat equal to point oh one five and then P, and then um, that was the answer for part A, which is the mean, and this here for the standard deviation. All right, so let's go out to Alex and find that value. Seriously? Oh, my goodness. All right, so we're going to take... Uh, 0 0.015, 0 0.015, minus 0 0.02, divided by 0 0.0035. And so you get a z-score of negative 1.428571. And they say do it to four decimal places. So if I were taking notes, I would just capture this to four places. And then I want to find the probability that z is less than that. So I'm going to hit the Z. And you say, well, Donna, how did you know it was less than? Um, because the symbol here is less than or equal to. And so you get 0 0.0765. And um, let's see here. Round here. So they want four decimal places. So 0 0.06766. Excuse me, 0 0.0766. All right. All right, let me do another one so you can kind of see how it'll move a little bit faster once we uh, um, can see um, how the formula works. <laughs> I took too long. <laughs> okay. Hopefully when it takes me back out there, it'll take me to the same problem. But if not, it's all good. And then I'll enter. Part of the thing is too the sun's coming up, and so.
sometimes it's hard for me to see my laptop screen. Nope, it's a different problem, but it's okay. All right, so we're now going to go ahead and find the mean uh, uh, for this one, and it's a researcher wants to invest the effects of environmental factors on IQ scores. For our initial study, she takes a sample of 400, you can't see that, it's not on the screen, but 400 who grew up as an only child, and she finds that 51.5% of them have an IQ over 100. It's known that for the general population, 50% have an IQ over the IQ score exceeding 100. All right. So um, it says find the mean of the p-hats, and the mean of the p-hats is p, and uh, they tell us here that it's known that the general population um, has a, a IQ score exceeding 100. So that tells us that the general population proportion is 50%. So P is going to be 0.5. All right. And then, um, then find the standard deviation, and that's where we do the square root of P. Uh, 0.5. 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5. Oops. Um, divided by a uh, sample of 400. Divided by 400. That's a sample. All right, and we get 0.025. So I'm going to store that value because I'm going to need it to find the z score. So I'm going to store it. So 0.025. And then to find the z-score, I'm going to take a look here. They want us to find the probability that p hat is greater than 0.515. What's the chance of that happening? All right, if the population is really 50%, what's the chance you're going to find greater than 51.5? Yahoo! So then we're going to find the z-score for that. All right. And so uh, the z-score is given by p hat, which is 0.515. Minus P, that's the answer in part A, which is 0.5, divided by the standard deviation, divided by the answer in um, part B, which I already stored, so I'm going to hit the recall. So I do that, and I get 0.6. So I want to find the probability that Z is greater than 0.6. Well, I don't have a greater than. I have a less than, so I'll just have to do 1 minus. So 1 minus the probability that Z is less than 0.6. And when I compute that guy, I get 0.274. And they want it to four places, so 0 0.2743. 0 0.2743. So hopefully this one won't have timed out on us. Yay! So well, thank you um, so much for being patient as I could not find the pause button and this turned out to be a little bit longer than I wanted, but I think this will help you finish uh, this last topic. Alrighty, bye-bye.